I've, I've learned so much from observing, you know, people that I respect, and 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 uh, you know, trying to reflect on what some of the great the old old players did, how they screwed up. Coleman Hawkins, he, you know, Zoot Sims took me to see him maybe about a year before he died, I don't know, two years before he, and he was like wearing a bathrobe, real skinny. I mean, he, he looked really terrible. He looked like he was 90. He was only 60-something. He had the beard. Yeah, on, you know, and like, he, Major Holly was there, and he, he saw there was, a, there was a dresser and there were two checks on it and it was and he, he, he being you know like there's two checks from the vanguard from two years ago and you never cashed them he says yeah well Max is having a bad couple of weeks he didn't cash them <laughs> that gives you insight into, into real character and but anyway I think there's a spiral what happens is that Somebody like Hawkins, who's a king, you know, and all of a sudden other people come on the scene. It could be Stan Getz, it could be later, it could be Sonny, it could be whatever, Coltrane. And then all of a sudden the uh, popularity diminishes, which leads to less work. And those guys, they, I think they spend a lot of time just playing and hanging, not a lot of, you know, staying home and just practicing or pre preparation. So life was, everything was like natural. And then when the gig stopped happening and the hang continues and the practice is not quite happening, you get on a gig, you don't sound as good as you, you can sound. I was fortunate enough to play a little bit with Roy Eldridge when I first came to New York by accident. I was, a friend of mine was playing with uh, um, Paul Chambers. And it was, believe it or not, as far as hotel, he had two groups, Roy Eldridge and, and Roy. So I would play with Paul, Paul Chambers guys. It wasn't Paul Chambers that was ultimate, put it that way. And then Roy said, hey, why don't you play with me, man? So I said, wow. I was, I was always afraid of older musicians. I was afraid that they, you know, intimidated is probably the word. So I would play with him and, you know, do my best. And, like, he'd start out the gig, like, you know, the first couple of nights, he's, he's not that great, you know, it's like not practicing. And so, so one, it's like a spiral. And so I learned that. I said, you know, I'm not, if I'm not working for a month or two months even, I have to keep on trying, you know, and people come over to the house and play it and just keep the physicality going. And, and all that stuff. So that's my uh, observation. It happened to a lot of guys. Ben Webster, when he was 60, figured he was tired. He was old, an old man. Time to go. And like, and it was, that's fortunately, it's you know a lot of people have changed. Like, like I mentioned, Frank West is old, ultimate, and uh, Jimmy Heath. Um, there was an old saxophone player. I think he just died with Frank Stanton. Staten, Staten, Dakota Staten, his brother. I heard him play last year in a, at some awards party, and he, he couldn't walk, but he, he got up on the bench and played beautifully, you know. And uh, so there's there's hope out there, and like it's also turning negatives into positives, and all all those things fit together. So it's it's, it's a long it's a long road. Tosco had a tune called Long Yellow Road. So this is a long uh, white road or any black road or any kind of road. It's a, it's a long musical road, put it yeah. that way. One of the things